thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, I think radio has been a real hot button topic lately and it's fantastic that we've got our panel of absolute experts and legends in the room. Um, for those of you who don't know what Music from South Wales is, the peak body means that we represent the contemporary music industry back to the government. So we advocate and lobby for musicians and industry professionals rights and we also run a number of programs and we do things like we have quick response funding so please make sure that you're familiar with our newsletter and our website we've always got fantastic deals offers grant opportunities and employment opportunities um, as well as just having lots of great information about the music industry <laughs> anyway um, without further ado i'm going to introduce danny and then if you guys want to come up on stage we'll get started Thank you very much, Jesse. G'day, I'm Debbie. I uh, am gainfully employed with the Community Broadcasting Association of Australia, the peak sector body for community broadcasters. Um, I would like to thank uh, TAFE New South Wales and Music New South Wales for this first bit of state based pride in this week of our Lord of Origin. That's uh, really fantastic that I can take the time out to sort of start building it up from the blues, from the band. Your panel for this evening uh, will go from, what is this, stage, right, left, left right, one or the other. Uh, first, John Zuko from The Right Profile. John has held positions such as National Promotions Publicity Manager, National Marketing Manager for Australian Artists and in A&R. His label career was spent at Polydor Polygram, Universal and Shop Records, and he has worked at the pointy end of developing artists' careers such as Powderfinger, The Cruel Sea, Spiderbait. I'm sorry that the mic dropped out there on Powderfinger, obviously due to the fact they're a Queensland band. Um, <laughs> A decade ago, he started The Right Profile, which is a music services company specialising in radio and TV, plugging in promotions and working with Australia's biggest acts, including Birds of Tokyo, Carnival, Sultan, Draft, and a whole lot more. Please make you feel welcome, John Zuko. Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Up next, Dom Alessio from Triple J. Dom has been many things in his life. A music journalist, get this, an Oztag referee. He will be fielding questions on that later on. He's been the arts and assistant editor for The Brag, a locally paid retail employee, and host of The Bridge, the Sydney music show on FBI Radio. But for the past five years, Dom's been presenting Home and Host, Triple J's Australian music show. And while it means he has no social life on weekdays, with the exception of Oztag, he has the plum job of being at the forefront of new Australian music, playing the best of it to the nation, Monday to Thursday from 9pm. That includes tonight. He doesn't get the night off just because he's hanging out with us. Please make it feel welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Next to Dom is Eliza Harvey, who is the station coordinator of uh, Sydney Community Radio Station 2 Triple R in Ride. She also moonlights as co-director of the fantastic music festival Sound Summit. Her fascination with Australian music sits somewhere on the fringes of genres and ideals and has led her to an ongoing excursion through the in independent music industry and the wider independent broadcasting community. Please make a firm welcome, ladies and gentlemen. friend and mine from the Australian Music Radio Airplay Project, it's Brooke Olsen. She works there as the Eret Coordinator, uh, working with major and independent labels of unsigned musicians to promote and distribute music to the 350 plus community radio stations Australia-wide. AMRAP offers a number of services to musicians at all stages of their career, assisting them in connecting with community radio broadcasters nationally, as well as tracking airplay. Brooke has volunteered and or worked for 2RRR, 2SER, ABC Radio National, and she can currently be heard on the award-winning program Ears Have Ears on FBI Radio. Brooke Olsen, ladies and gentlemen. Um, um, all right, well, I'll throw it over uh, to the panel. Firstly, uh, they're going to let you guys know how to get your music on radio. Start with you, John. Well, um, it's quite um, straightforward and it's also really complex um, and, uh, oh God, where do I start? Well, firstly, you have to have really compelling songs. Um, you have to have an incredible amount of patience um, and don't expect to uh, get anything away or get any real traction, you know, anytime soon. I think you have to have a really 
uh, long view, um, uh, and I think you have to have a, a pretty serious DIY ethic. Um, it's you, you need to do a lot for yourself before you expect anybody else to do anything for you, um, and that's you know um, uh, you know once you get the song right. Um, and you do get it out to radio, uh, you have to be, uh, oh, you know, know where, know where, where, it should, where, where it belongs. A lot of people waste a lot of time trying to stick a, a song into the wrong station, the wrong fo format, and that can be an incredible time-wasting exercise and also probably frustrate the people you're trying to um, get to play it. Um, I think also uh, you have to have uh, a very long plan you know, a couple of years to build up some sort of profile, I think, um, and it's just not a radio thing. You have to be out there um, performing a lot and having compelling performances. Uh, and I think you need a smidgen of good luck and timing and a whole lot of other things. <laughs> How's that? That's not a bad sale. I should also point out that there will be a Q&A session uh, once all the speakers have had a bit of a chance to tell you more about what they do and how they can assist you on getting your songs on radio. So uh, we'll check it out to Don next. Jeez, it's a big question, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It, it's massive, actually. It's yeah, it, it's not something that you can just summarise in like a, a couple of minutes. I think the thing to keep in mind, especially when it comes to making music is there's just so much out there. And the limits of time and space means that you can only fit a certain amount of songs on radio per day. Um, and with a station like Triple J, there's less opportunities because for a lot of the day, the songs are playlisted. Uh, I mean, a show like mine, I get free reign over what I want to play and ditto the specialist show. So if you're a metal band or if you make hip hop or if you make dance music, you've got some opportunities there. And that's where community radio and independent radio like FBI become really great because there are those great opportunities to get some early radio play and start to cultivate a name for yourself and start to cultivate a, a fan base for yourself. Um, I, think, I think John's really right when he says targeting the radio stations that you want and, and being really brutally critical of yourself and where you are in your career. If you're... If you've just released your very first song that you recorded in your bedroom, maybe it's not quite ready to be played on Triple J yet, but maybe something like The Bridge on FBI will play it, or, or 2 Triple R will give it a go. Um, and, and yeah, thinking about those, those long-term plans and, and where you want to go with your music. Um, I mean, I could probably talk about this for another four hours. Oh, we'll, we'll give you that four hours if you want. You guys have got nowhere to go, do you? <laughs> Yeah, if I didn't have to do a show at 9 o'clock, uh, i got to work tonight. That's a lot of dead air. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sure they won't perceive this as an advertisement or anything, but you could uh, sort of depend a bit more about uh, Unearthed. Yeah, okay, so Unearthed, to give you a, to try to summarise it all, originally started off as a competition in the 90s where Triple J would go to different uh, parts of the country and essentially just discover a whole bunch of bands. You know, Grinspoon came out of that, Killing Heidi came out of that, and a whole bunch of others. In the 2000s, it morphed into a website um, and nowadays has become a radio station, which I feel like is probably that ultimate fulfilment of Unearthed's goal, which was to discover new independent music and give it a platform. And so now Unearthed is... I, I think they like to call it a community, and, and I kind of like that idea um, because... Um, you know, it, it really, it, it's really up to you whether you want to be a part of that community. I'm not here to say you should definitely join Unearthed or you should not join Unearthed. It's really up to you and what you want to do with your music. Um, obviously, I think it's a great idea because um, it, gives, yeah, it gives you a chance to be played on a radio station, on Unearthed Digital Radio. We also give uh, Unearthed artists opportunities to play at festivals or be on shows like the One Night Stand and, and those opportunities happen right throughout the year. Uh, and you're open to a wider audience with like Unearthed feature artists or the podcast or the, you know, the various shows on Un Unearthed Digital Radio as well. I know a lot of people balk at the idea of giving your songs away for free and I can understand that. Um, but I think at this point in your career, when you're really starting off, you're probably not going to earn much money from your music anyway. So any opportunities to further that promotion, I think, uh, is a really good idea. Um, 
and yeah, I mean, it, it's as easy as just going to triplejanerth.com, signing up for a profile, putting your songs up, and away you go. Yeah, it's, pre- it's pretty busy, the, the competition. There's what, 400 or 700 tracks a month or something? <sighs> oh, I'd say about a week. Yeah. Well, I think, I think we've... Huge. I think we've hit about 45,000 artists or something like that. Um, and for me personally, Unearthed is, is great because we have a whole team who listen to everything that gets uploaded and that's not a lie, they listen to everything. So it's a great filter for me because then I can, I can find that good stuff because unsurprisingly, there's some real shit on there. Um, but, and there's some also some amazing things as well. Uh, and Unearthed is a really great platform to find that gold. And I also imagine that Unearth would be valuable to the artist because it provides another platform should someone want to Google that artist's name. Exactly. I think any, any platform you can use to get your name out is a great idea because these days, you know, so many pe- there's so many platforms and so many, so many people have their, have their favourites. Um, so being across all of them, you know, it, it's going to help you. It's not going to make you an artist, but, you know, it... If somebody goes on Unearthed and looks for, you know, the Dom Alessio band, yeah. and I'm there, then that gives them an opportunity to hear it. Would you, would you play the Dom Alessio band? Uh, no, have you ever heard the music I make? It's terrible. <laughs> Don't make me pull this shirt off and reveal the Dom Alessio band t-shirt I have. <laughs> <laughs> made, on, made on MS Paint. <laughs> You get a lot of um, A&R people and a lot of um, booking agents, they, they do scour Unearth to find, you know, the next thing. So, you know, they, they have to do, go, do, ha- they do have to go through a lot, but, um, but, you know, you do find some gold there. Yeah, actually, funnily enough, I, I notice on TV ads lately heaps of stuff that's been on Unearthed. Oh, yeah. And I actually know a lot of, like, production companies and people searching for music will go on Unearthed and search for stuff. Mm. Oh, fantastic. I might just kick it over to Liza. I was going to add to that and say I've also heard of other people from other radio stations using Unearthed as well to find new music, especially if they're part of specialist shows. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. so it's a great resource all around, even for the competition. Well, which, Um, yeah, I think it's become, you know, it's become its own platform, something, you know, it's just like scouring through SoundCloud, I think. Oh, totally, yeah. Um, So I represent the community radio side and the station I'm at at the moment, 2RRR, we're a sub-met show, so that means we just cover a small um, couple of council areas up in Ryde. Um, Before that, I was part of 4RRZ in Brisbane, which is a um, whole city-wide station, much like, you know, um, FBI or 2SER down here. Um, With community radio, you have a really excellent opportunity to have super niche programs, so you can target your music and your sound and target that to the the presenter or the program that you think is most going to suit and it's going to really like heighten your chances of getting radio play straight up. Um, The best piece of advice is always do your research. Don't just read program guide sort of descriptions. That'll give you an initial initial idea about sort of what programs you might be looking at. but don't just read, oh, independent Australian music program and then send your music in because it might be an independent Australian music program that plays experimental music and you've just sent in your metal album and it might not correspond. So <laughs> you want to really make sure you know who you're sending it to because it's also, you know, you don't want to waste money on that sort of thing as well. You want to make sure that every piece of, you know, media that you've created is, is, is valuable and can also be appreciated by the right people. Um, that's, that's a big piece of advice, I think, is really do your research. Yeah, and increasingly, um, community broadcasting stations all around the nation are putting their, their content is available sort of uh, via the internet. So you're not sort of limited to the stations that are in a geographical area. Say, if you are a niche artist, uh, you can find stations across the other side of the country who have programs who would uh, suit the sort of music you make. Um, now to tell us more. Now to tell us more about getting your music on community radio, Bill Gosson. Hi, this is such a massive question, but I wanted to step back a little bit and talk about actually presenting your music to radio stations. So there's, this is going to sound really obvious, but there are quite a few things that you need to do as a musician when you're submitting music to radio to make sure that broadcasters can actually kind of contact you and find out more about you. Uh, the first one is, it's, it's one that's really easy to forget, is make sure you put your contact details on the CD. Sounds obvious, but um, quite a few people forget it. And just as a broadcaster, I mean, I've been doing radio on community radio stations for about eight or so years now. 
and volunteering in them and that's kind of been something that I've always found pretty frustrating when you get a CD that's really amazing but there's just no contact details on it. Um, the other one is to send a really clear playlist and to also put together something that's a media release or a bio, something that gives the broadcaster a bit of information about who you are, what you do and all that sort of stuff and of course always web links as well. So just a few really basic things if you're sending CDs and obviously it's quite similar if you're sending an email to the station or to a broadcaster of your choice. As far as uh, AMRAP, so the Australian Music Radio Airplay Project, we have a bunch of services which actually help to increase airplay opportunities for Australian musicians. It's a pretty comprehensive list, so I'm just going to go through a couple of them really briefly and then if you guys have questions you can ask a little bit later on. Uh, the first one is a monthly CD mail out and what we do is we distribute a curated selection of releases out to national com community radio stations Australia wide. So just bear in mind that with community radio stations like FBI or 2RRR or 4RRZ in Brisbane, there's over 350 of them, it's actually around about 380 of them. So sourcing all of that information and getting those CDs out or your, your, you know, your digital files out to them can actually be an intensely long process. Um, so with our monthly CD mail out, you actually just send us your music and then we will allocate it to stations across the country who are most likely to play your music and also programs across the country that are most likely to play your music and then we'll send it on to them and follow up with a, just a distribution list of where they've actually been sent to so you can make contact with the stations yourselves. Uh, we also have a service called Air It, which is an online catalogue of Australian music uh, direct to community radio stations and broadcasters. So basically broadcasters across the country from different stations, they have their own logins. They just log in and they can browse the catalogue in full, um, preview stacks of new Australian music from major labels, also independent labels and unsigned artists, like I'm sure a lot of you guys are preview and have a listen and decide what they want to play on their show and then either download that or get it sent to them on a customised compilation we, which we actually burn off with a read sheet and then send it to them. And then from that we also send artists monthly reports as well so you can actually drill down and find out what not only what station you've been played on but also what time you were played and by what program as well. So that's the AMRAP side of things. But there's a lot more to it too, but yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I love so yeah. yeah. John uses it a fair bit for his artists. It's a great, great way for me to um, upload and blast out my music out to uh, community radio. And community radio is just so important. It, it, is, it is like the bedrock. It's like a big garden nursery for all kinds of eclectic artists that you know, find their, find their little slots and develop them and build up and build up their audience. So it's really important that you hear it some. Key. We're just going in the mic there as soon as you finish. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm pretty far along. Like Holland, so that's okay. <laughs> I should mention that Air It's a free service, but there is an application process, and that the CD mail out is there's a dollar is a dollar sixty five per disc plus there's a fifty five dollar admin fee. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely as Liza said, doing your research and actually building those relationships with broadcasters, especially if you're starting out. Because initially, you, you're probably like the reason you're actually here is because you're probably thinking, how the hell do I get my music out to radio, and where do I find these people, and what do they do? But that's a really good way to start. So, definitely worth looking into with community radio. Uh, now, with sort of with the uh, AMRAP error service and with Triple J unearthed, and with just sort of sending out the CDs to yourself, in addition to having awesome music and also having your name and contact details on there, artists are going to need to put together a bit of a press kit. So I'm going to go through the panel here and you let us know a few things that you would like to see in an artist's press kit that's going to make them stand out. Keep it short and sweet and to the point and don't waffle on. Uh, really key points, um, who the band is, what the track is, duration of track, um, your social uh, media contacts, um, a blurb about the band, don't make it two pages and um, yeah that, that's really important. Um, any key links, yeah I think uh, 
don't be too indulgent because we're already really time poor in all kind of aspects of our life. So, yeah, that's my tip. Don, what do you look for? Well, I have a rule that the more things that get sent in with a CD, the worse the CD is. So there, there's been things that have come through, you know, like CDs and a whole bunch of balloons. I'm like, this is going to be bad because if it was good, then the music would speak for itself. So keep it simple is probably the first idea. Um, John's right, don't make it too long. For me, I like to see if a band has been, or an artist has been, you know, playing with other notable acts. Um, especially for me when, you know, if you're going to take that music to that next national level, if you've been playing with some acts that Triple J are playing, um, then that, I think that reflects really well on the band. It shows that, all the artists know, it shows that you're getting out, it shows that you're playing in front of people, it shows that you're playing to good acts in good venues. So I always think that's good, you know, talk up yourself. Don't be too wanky about it, you know. There's some, it's like, this is music from the future. It's like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's really not. Um, so y humility always, you know, humility goes a long way, I think. You know what, I, would go, I, I, I edit so many bands' bios because I said you don't want to embarrass yourself with these grandiose statements. Yeah. Although if you're like, the, you're like uh, we are the greatest band in the world, I would probably laugh at that. Yeah, but, um, yeah there's a, a fine fun. line between humour and just what the statement. moments. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay. I'm done, go for it. Okay. Um, you, sometimes it's good. I, my, sort of my first... A uh, volunteering job at Four Triple Z was in the music department. Was the really, really awesome task of taking all the CDs that we got in, putting them in the computer, ripping them to the CD to the to the computer, putting it into the database, writing a little bio, and sending it out to all the artists, uh, all the presenters that I thought it, who would enjoy that music. And we we started a wall of press releases of shame <laughs> in the Four Triple Z music library because. People just, they have a tendency to waffle and put references in and, and, you know, like about their bands that don't really give any information. Like, I like Radiohead. It's like, awesome. Who doesn't? What do you sound like? Really? You're not going to sound like Tom York. I'm really sorry. And so try and, well, it's good to put in references for what you, you know, sound like. And, you know, it's, it's a better way to do it. You can find better ways to do that. Like, again, saying who you've been playing with locally is a really good way to indicate what, what kind of music you might be. And yeah, the music will speak for itself. So you don't have to list a whole paragraph of bands that you like and bands that you sound like because it's not really going to give too much information um, about your actual music in the end. Um, also, don't spend too much money on the stuff that you're going to be sending out to radio stations. I got a really good example this morning. We received this amazingly beautiful, like a gold foil envelope. And then in the envelope was this like plastic folder. And in the plastic folder was these beautifully printed on two bits of really thick card and proper printed, like not just a jet printer, but like they went to like an office works or some shit. And on <laughs> one page was like a bio and, a, and you know, how you can download, le download their music on iTunes and stuff and the other was a track listing but it kind of read like a wedding invitation and then there was also inside that a CD case, like a beautifully printed like recycled cardboard CD case with a printed CD in it and it just thought, I just thought, oh man, if, if this, you know, musician had spent say on average five dollars per Thing that she was sending out and she's sending them out to 20 radio stations and maybe one was going to play them that's a lot of money to waste and it's a lot of money on you guys and you don't you know you don't need to spend that kind of money when you're sending out stuff you can print it on a4 paper you know you press release on a4 paper and it still looks nice you know you can still format it really lovely and it's not gonna i think give you an advantage or a disadvantage if you spend more money on it um, also don't use too many adjectives ever <laughs> try and just say things that mean actual things as opposed to things that might mean other things. Um, but yeah, that's my little rant about <laughs> press releases. I was also, also going to say, don't forget to put the track listing. Sometimes I get a burnt CD and it's like... Or well, the track list on the, the actual disc. Don't do that oh, either because yeah, then you put the disc into the CD player and realise that you've got no track list. <laughs> <laughs> and especially if you're doing that while you're doing a radio show, you're like, that was track three. We just played it. <laughs> I, I guess I guess for my show though, like I should also say that I'm happy to accept download links and more and more these days, 
if you send me a download link to a WAV file, that's great because the greenie in me thinks that it's saving the environment. It also saves you money. And it, yeah, and it's cheaper for you guys. Um, I mean, I, the, the first example that comes to mind, which is, look, to be honest, is the very, very rare occasion is there's a girl from Sydney, oh no, she's in Melbourne now, called Meg Mack, who literally on the Tuesday sent me a link out to her new song and said, hey Dom, this is my new song. And then the next day we added it to rotation. And that was it. Uh, and look, obviously that's that's your th that that's such a rare occurrence. But I use that example to say that ultimately you need to let the music speak for itself. Just going back for my radio show on FBI, I'm going to talk from that perspective, because the the person I produce the show with, we're really really time shy. So as as was previously mentioned, I really like to know uh, how recent is the this release, so the release date if this artist is touring soon, a bit of a backstory behind the artist and what they've got coming up in the future. So that's, that's my main four. Um, that's really, really useful and also the obvious of where can I listen to the track? Do I have to go to, is it a download link? Um, is it Bandcamp? Because there are so many ways that you can actually grab a, an online link now. But those are the, the top for me, yep. <laughs> 